Good morning, everyone. Please ensure that your mobile phones are switched off. It is easy to deceive ourselves and imagine we have done good when all we have had are good thoughts, which will never save anyone. Those who actually do good, who curb their tempers, who forgive, who obey God, they demonstrate more true faith and love of God than any whose piety does not go beyond themselves. Please stand and join in our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, I guess it's the long weekend, school holidays, daylight saving, so people are doing all sorts of things today. But we have gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who calls us into his sacred heart. Let us now acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Father, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, O God, who manifests your almighty power, above all, by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object what the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel, is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, 
then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself so that nobody thinks of his own interests first, but everybody thinks of other people's interests instead. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet. Even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go, but afterwards thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second, who answered, Certainly, sir but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Of course, our Lord is attacking severely the Pharisees, the chief priests, the scribes, and so on, the elders of the Jewish people, because of their horrific pride. Pride and ego and arrogance, they're the biggest problems we have as human beings. They're the biggest sins to overcome. That's why I always get a bit frustrated with people who think, oh, well, I don't commit adultery, I don't steal, I don't murder, therefore I haven't sinned. That's just stupid. No idea who you are if you think like that. You're going to get a horrible shock on your day of judgment. If that were the only sins, great. But there are ten commandments, not three, and the Lord made it very, very, very clear that we have to understand the depth of those commandments. For example, our Lord taught that even if we lust in our heart, we've committed adultery. What goes on within is very, very important. And so he calls us to true repentance. And the proud and the arrogant and the egotistical, they're the ones that have such obstacles that find it very, very hard to repent. And so they've got a big problem. 
And we do need to see our pride and our egos because we've all got them. And the people who think they haven't got them, I worry about. And of course, it usually expresses itself in things like demanding to have your own way, throwing tantrums when you don't get your own way, not forgiving people, <coughs> accepting, not accepting the fact that people are unjust, unjust to us and we have to accept that injustice humbly with Christ because our Lord was treated the most unjustly of all. These things are vital. But now, for those who do repent, this is the wonderful thing. For the humble, the joy of God's glory is yours. St. Francis of Assisi, you notice they never put a lily with St. Francis, okay? You see St. Anthony of Padua, a lily. St. Joseph, a lily. The lily represents virginity. We don't know about St. Francis. We know as a young man, he was very spoiled. He had a very, very rich father. He had access to his father's money. He wore the best clothes, loved parties, loved dancing, loved singing, loved jokes, loved everything and had the best of life. But then he had this magnificent conversion in his very, when he was about 20 years old, extraordinary conversion. And as he lived his life from then on, he would sometimes, in the early years, consider his sins. And he would be grieved for the sins that he had committed. And he would weep over his sins. And one day, in the early years of the order, he was walking with his companion, Brother Leo. And he said to Brother Leo, I'm going to say something and I want you to respond this way. And I'm going to say, oh, Francis, what a terrible sinner you are. You deserve the depths of hell for your sins. And Brother Leo, I want you to respond by saying, yes, Friar Francis, you are the worst of sinners and you should be in the worst part of hell imaginable. So... Father, Brother Francis, because he was never a priest St. Francis, even though he's often called Father Francis by the friars because he was the father of the order, but he was never a priest. Anyway, Brother Francis said, Oh, Brother Francis, you are the worst of sinners. The sins you have committed have offended God so much in your life. You deserve the worst punishment imaginable. And then Brother Leo opened his mouth, intending to say what St. Francis told him to say, and he said, ah, but God is going to bless you because you have humbled yourself, because you've repented, and you are, God is doing great things through you. And this conversation went on between St. Francis and Brother Leo. St. Francis kept trying to make Brother Leo confirm him in his wretchedness and sinfulness and, and the punishment he deserved. And every time Brother Leo opened his mouth, he, he was going to do what St. Francis wanted, but God spoke through Brother Leo's mouth and said that the Lord was doing wonderful things and many souls will be saved through St. Francis. And God will be given such glory through this, this humble man. And of course this is true, St. Francis has turned out to be one of the greatest saints of the church. And his order, massive, everywhere in the world, friars, sisters, third order, it's extraordinary how vast it is. And so this little, little man did this. God used him to do this. And it teaches us so much. You see, God is merciful to the repentant. He loves having mercy on the sinner. And this is the, the little thing that, I don't know, it's the key. And so many people today don't seem to grasp it. The need, the absolute need for humility and truth before God. To humble ourselves, to acknowledge our sins, and to truly repent, confessing our sins and receiving Christ's powerful absolution. It's such a wonderful, wonderful gift. And the other thing is, we cannot start life at the end. You know, sometimes as children, when we're growing up, we have all these great aspirations of the things we're going to do. 
but we don't understand when we're little that it's a long, 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 long journey of hard work and training to do the things we want to do. It's a journey, and it can be a very, very difficult journey. Well, that's life, isn't it? And even though we fail, we sin, we make mistakes, that's part of the journey in a way. But that doesn't mean God gives up on us. I always get angry when I hear parents say to their children, if you do that, God won't love you anymore. Oh, that's blasphemy. God always loves us. Our behaviour doesn't change God's love. We need to understand what sin is. Sin wounds. Sin harms. Sin destroys. That's why sins are sins. Not like government who seem to be making laws all the time. Every, way, every time you turn around, there's a new law out. Like recently they brought out another law you can't eat while you're driving. I mean, for goodness sakes, our politicians are mental. You can't beep your horn when you're driving away. It's against the law now. They're imbeciles. But God's not like that. He doesn't, doesn't make laws willy-nilly. The reason that sins are sins is because they harm, they wound, they destroy, okay? Even if you can't see it, that's the reality. That's what makes a sin a sin. So sins can't change. Just because someone doesn't like this sin anymore, oh, that's not a sin. I'm sorry, it's not up to us. There are the Ten Commandments and everything that Christ and the Apostles taught us. And that can't change, no matter who says otherwise. But God loves, loves to forgive. And when he forgives, do you know he truly forgives? The trouble with us is we remember our sins. You know, and as you get older and you look back on the things you've done and they can really drag you down, oh no. And they can grieve you and the failures... The things you said in your stupidity, we all do it. Our Lord said about hell, he says, hell is a, a place, and hell exists, where fire never goes out and worm never dies. What's the worm? I've said it before. It's that horrible regret you can have. You know when, and as you get older, you'll discover this if you haven't yet, and if you haven't, well, God bless you. But when you do something wrong or terrible and you regret doing it and it eats you, you know, and you remember it every now and again, oh, why did I do that? And it drives you crazy. Well, in hell, that regret just is amplified and goes on and on and on forever. It's terrible. But I want to tell you a beautiful little story. It comes from St. Therese of the Child Jesus, whose feast day is today. And it's about a convert. This fellow was an ex-drug addict, an alcoholic, he was once a soldier, and a man of absolute concupiscence. And the memories of his sins of his life were always in his mind. But God had given him great grace, he had a conversion. As an adult, he was received into the Catholic Church. He says, though, I soon found that the sacrament of confirmation didn't take away my temptations. It didn't drive out the despair I felt at times. And weeks later, I was troubled by my continual, continued sinfulness and seeking distraction. Then I happened to look upon a gift that my sponsor had given me for my confirmation. It was a book on the spirituality of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. She spent most of her brief life in a cloistered convent. She was dead by the age of 24. And he thought to himself, well, how could such an innocent teach me? But then he read from the book, and this is what she wrote. I ask that from now on, you never let your past sins be an obstacle between you and Jesus. It's a ruse of the devil to keep putting our sins before our eyes in order to make them like a screen between the Saviour and us. A ruse of the devil. 
Think of your past sins to persuade yourself of your weakness, yes. Think of them to confirm your resolution not to fall again. That is necessary. But think of them mainly to bless Jesus for having pardoned you, for having purified you, for having cast all your sins to the bottom of the sea. St. Therese says, do not go looking for them at the bottom of the sea. He has wiped them out. He has forgotten them. But I haven't forgotten them, and I continue to fall. I'm not saying that you believe too much in your own wretchedness, she says. I'm telling you that you don't believe in enough in his merciful love. And in another place she wrote, Why are you here? Why are you here? Why were you baptised? Why have you learnt to know Jesus and to love him? And the answer, because God has chosen you. Every one of you here. He has preferred you from all eternity to heap all his graces upon you. And so, God's greatest pleasure is to pardon us. The good Lord is more eager to pardon a repentant sinner than a mother to rescue her child from the fire. Not a single soul falls into hell that has not torn itself out of my arms, says the Lord. Isn't that interesting? No wonder St. Therese was able to say just before her death, and this is what she said, even if I had committed all possible crimes, I would still have the same confidence. I would feel that this multitude of offences would be like a drop of water thrown into the flaming furnace of God's love. Now, unfortunately, there are people today who would read that and think, oh, well, sins don't matter. That's not what she's saying. She's saying once we bring our sins to the Lord, no matter how much we remember them, he forgives them completely. And we have to trust in his mercy completely. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us earnestly ask God's mercy as we offer our prayers with hope and trust. For the purification and renewal of the church everywhere, 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the conversion of our country, and especially for faithful leaders in the church and in government. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young parishioners and loved ones preparing for their HSE. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those suffering with sickness, depression, loneliness and sorrow, that the light of Christ will fill them with hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of our faithful departed, especially our relatives, friends and parishioners, that they will be raised to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Loving God and Father, you are near to all who call upon you. Deliver us from every evil and help us in our day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pray for us, the sacrifice Pray for us, the Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Jesus. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice of spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, How far who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
just a couple of notices to bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters. Um, we're in the midst of the Novena in honour of St Francis of Assisi, which happens every night at 7pm, and there are confessions available uh, during that. So if you come along and you want to go to confession, you can. It finishes on Tuesday night, that's the last night of the Novena, with the Transitus of St Francis. If you've never been to it, come along. It's unique to St Francis of Assisi. It's a very beautiful and ancient ceremony. Um, uh, honouring the passing of him from this world to the next. On Wednesday, which is the actual feast of St Francis of Assisi, and of course we're Franciscans, for us it's a solemnity, so it's a very solemn occasion. We're cancelling the Wednesday morning Mass, no morning Mass Wednesday, and the Mass will be 7pm on Wednesday night. 7pm, big solemn Mass in honour of St Francis. There's no Holy Hour on the 5th of October, and there will be no all-night vigil uh, this Friday. It will all go back to normal after that. We've got morning tea on Sunday the 8th and the traditional blessing of the animals in honour of St Francis. So if you have pets you want to bring along for a blessing, please do so. And we're having a cup or after mass, so bring a, bring a plate if you want to be part of that as well. And don't forget we've got our St Bernadette's men's group. So any men who wish to be part of this group, have a look at that. It's a great thing and a great idea, and I really encourage you. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. My almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.